Hello everybody, Jumbo Jumbo. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on where you are watching me from. Welcome and welcome to my channel again, guys. Like you can see today, I am not alone. I am here with a guest and we are so, so, so excited to bring this wonderful, beautiful guest. You guys, Niliwambia, I will be bringing you good news after good news after good news. And today is yet another video where we are going to be talking to somebody who has come all the way to the UK. And without further ado, welcome my guest. And yes, Makofi Nashangwe. <laughs> Ruth. Thank you. Welcome and welcome to Baraka Reality Media. Thank you so much. Yes, we are really, really honored to have you with us. So I'm just going to ask you to introduce yourself so that people, my viewers, can know who you are and where you are coming from. Thank you. Well, let me start by thanking you, uh, Sharon, for giving me this opportunity to come and sit with you and um, really to thank God uh, for this opportunity that I got uh, to be in the UK. So my name is uh, Ruth Niha Gitao, and I am from Kenya. Wow, wow. You are not in Kenya right now, Ruth? No, no, no. Right now I am in the uh, in United Kingdom. Yes. Yeah, in, uh, in Wales. Ah, in Wales. So that is very interesting. So Ruth is from Kenya originally. And of course, she is here in the United Kingdom, meaning she has had to have a journey to come here to the UK. And that is the journey that we are interested in. Again, Ruth, I'm going to just ask you to let us know, how did you find yourself in the UK? Well, this was back in uh, January. Uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, whereby I I listened to your channel, and where I got the link uh, was from my mom, who is uh, in Kenya uh, in a town uh, in Eldora town. So she sent me a link uh, of you being interviewed by Damaris. And uh, that was a very good video. Um, I actually listened it to the end. And at the, at the end of the video, you said, if anyone would want to, to apply for a job in the UK, uh, right now UK has opened up um, opportunities. And if you apply, you would get a job. So uh, what you did, you gave your email in the video. So the following day, I sent you an email asking you to send me more links and also to help me on how I, I could do the job application because um, it was quite specific. You would not just go to the internet and Google any job and you would get. So I sent you an email and uh, you sent me three links of your videos together with an, an Excel sheet that has tier two sponsorship companies. Yeah. So from that Excel sheet, that is where I was able to get a job. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That yeah. is massive. And, you know, that time, uh, I remember the time that you're talking about. I was in the U.S. at that time yeah. uh, when I did that interview with um, Jeremy Damaris. And a lot of people emailed me. A lot of people contacted me. Some of them found me on even my social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram. And I was sending the same message to everybody. So I can't actually say that I knew you specifically. <laughs> it's actually, no. It's just how God uses uh, me as a vessel to reach out to somebody. And you were the one that was touched by that message because I can tell you, I send out so, so, so many messages. And one thing, guys, I want to tell you, when Ruth reached out to me and she told me that she followed step-by-step -step guidance, what I was talking about, I, I felt like I am... The one that has, you know, been given this visa, I was so happy. But I was like, if this is how God feels when people get saved, I now yeah. understand because this one <laughs> made me so happy. I was so yeah. overwhelmed. So th this tells you guys that these opportunities are actually real. 
the jobs here are real you can see this is ruth she has traveled from kenya i i don't know god is my witness i don't know her i've never even met her we only interacted via social media she wrote to me and like i said i wrote to so many people so i didn't even know who it was that i was sending to i can't say that i was sending to people that i know or um if there was anything between me and her no there is nothing god is my witness and ruth also is a witness to so that there was nothing she just followed the videos so ruth you did the application did you use any agency because one of the biggest question that people ask me is which agency helped you to do the application all right well for myself i did not use any agency what i did um i went to when, when i was uh, going through your when i was watching your video is how you 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 gave uh, you were explaining how you go to the tier 2 sponsorship list you you select the sector you'd want to apply for a job so i selected medical and then companies popped up so i would go to a company i go to the web to their website then there i would get their email i send an application so for me i sent an application directly to a company and the company um responded to me so for me it was direct to a company in wales wow so was that the only one that you chose was it the first company you applied that gave you an interview no. did you apply not really not oh. really i had done close to 10 to 15 applications and uh, actually they would respond in, uh, if it was not in the same day they would respond two days after wow so their response was quite immediate they tell you uh, sorry you've not qualified for this position so luckily on my 10th one that's when I, I got a, I got a response of a, of an inter, of an interview yes wow and that is the reason why you should never give up imagine if you had given up saying yes. that i've tried so many of these things is not working because so many people give up they they try to make the application and then they think ah this thing is not working and they give up Yeah. And 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 that is one thing guys I will tell you never give up because you never know it could be the 10th time it could be the first time the other time I interviewed somebody here and if you haven't watched that video go back and watch an interview I did with a a, a gentleman called Mike he did his uh, application only once and that was the time that he, the only time that he he applied and he was invited for the interview somebody else like Ruth tried different times so it doesn't matter just keep trying and don't give up is the message i think ruth is here trying to say oh mm -hmm. my goodness ruth this is very exciting mm -hmm. and then okay so you you done your um 10th application you were successful from mm -hmm. there can you please walk my viewers then what happened after that so did they give you your certificate of sponsorship immediately did you have to wait for it what happened all right um upon doing the interview they asked me if i had the qualification for the job uh -huh. since uh, the the company is in the medical sector okay yeah so for me i have a background of uh, med uh, medical experience whereby i had done some red cross uh, certifications so i had certificate uh, certificate from red cross um so th that one gave me an upper hand mm uh -huh. then um they said if uh, i can do an english exam this is the english ukvi exam the ielts the ielts uh -huh. the ielts exam and it has to be ukvi general yes. yes so they told me to do that exam and send them my results so i had to go online uh, book for my ukvi exam which i did in a month's time I did it got my results and uh, you had to score a minimum of 5 points so i i, I did that and i got um, 6.5 so when i sent it to them uh, together with all the medical certificates they now sent me the certificate of sponsorship wow Wow. Yeah. Wow. So the IELTS was actually not for the visa, it was for the employer. Yes. The employer And had to see the IELTS first 
before they give you the COS. Wow, wow. Yes, yes. And the, the other thing was a TB test. Okay. Yeah, which I also had to do a TB test uh, from an approved uh, home office. And this is IOM, IOM in, uh, in Nairobi. Right, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and um, of course the TB test comes at a charge and also the, the, the eyelets. Was it, did you have to go to college to do it or was it just the exam you paid for? I don't know. Can you just explain to people? Because one of the things that a lot of people are asking me is how can I do the eyelets or where can I do the eyelets? I don't know whether it is something that is online or whether it is something that you need to go to a class. So for the eyelets UKVI, you only book it at British Council. So... um when you book it online, yeah, you will do the exam at the British Council. Okay. Yes, and this is at the British Embassy. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. If you do any other type of eyelets, it will not be accepted. It has to be UKVI, and you will only do it at the British Embassy. Wow. Wow. Yes. yes. So guys, I hope you're getting all this. I hope you're getting all this um, information. Please go and check out that uh, exam that Ruth is telling you guys. It has to be the British one. If you do any other one, it's not going to be acceptable. So please make sure that you're doing the right exam. Otherwise, it's going to be a waste of your money and that is not good. And then for the TB test, you go to any hospital or is it a, an approved hospital? For the TB test, it has to be, the, uh, you have to do it at an approved um, organization. Okay. And in Kenya, it is only done at IOM uh, in Gigiri. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, wow. Well, all right. So guys, I hope you're listening uh, step by step. We don't want you to miss and uh, I don't want you to come and start asking me questions because Ruth is the one that has applied. She's come from Kenya. Of course, we speak to people from all over the world. But in this particular interview, we are talking to somebody who has got their yeah, their. Um, COS, that is Certificate of Sponsorship, and subsequently got their skilled worker visa from Kenya. They are here in the UK. I am myself in Manchester and Ruth is here in the UK in a place called Wales. Yes, but we are sat together doing this interview so that you guys can be encouraged and cannot give up. All right, Ruth, so let's carry on. So now you have everything that uh, the documentation that you want, and now it's time to go and get the visa. How do you then, what's the process of booking for the visa? All right. So once you send uh, your IELTS exam and the TB test to your employer, mm -hmm. uh, your employer will give you a contract. You'll sign a contract, uh, this is a job contract. It could be permanent. It could tell you it's maybe three years. But for mine, it's a permanent contract. And then they send you a COS, and the COS is valid for three years. So now once they send you the COS, okay. you have to book for your visa um, appointment online. You have to do your visa application online. And now this one, I remember we had to go to an agent, to someone who helped us uh, book for the visa because uh, it was actually a 10-page application that you do. Uh -huh. That requires a lot of information in there. Uh, once you when when you start filling in, it it asks you for your COS number, mm -hmm. so you have to fill in the COS number. Then uh, the COS the COS has a employer number, which is a license number. Okay. So you have to fill that in together with all my details, my passport uh, number, all the information in my passport. And, and now the the duration of the COS. And something else about the COS, if an employer gives you accommodation, for example, mm -hmm. if they are they're accommodating you for one month, mm -hmm. they have to indicate that in the COS. Right. Saying okay. that they will give you uh, accommodation. And with that, you do not have to prove with bank statements. You don't have to upload bank statements when you're doing your visa application. 
Ah, all right. Because the employer is going to be sponsoring you, going to be giving you accommodation. So yes. that saves you the hassle of having to produce because they're asking for 1200 and I think 70 in your bank account. Yes, yes. Ah, right. Oh, okay. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So there are actually employers. You just mentioned something there that it is possible to get an employer that is going to support you with accommodation for one month, which is what yes. I have told people before. It's possible to be yes. supported by your employer. Is that something you ask the employer at the time you're doing the interview or do they just offer it? Or did they offer it for you in your case? They offered it. They actually offered it in my case. Ah. Yes, because I think they saw that's the challenge that people are having. Yeah. Being able to raise that money in the bank. Yeah. So for the company, they offered it to us, to me. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, and then what was the wait time from when you now then applied for your visa? You, we, you, of course, you now have your certificate of sponsorship. You've done your application now for the visa. How long yeah. did you have to wait for the visa to be produced? Uh, so once you do your visa application, you get an appointment, you get an appointment in one week's time. So you go to TLS contact in Westland. TLS for those who are in Kenya, TLS in Westlands. Yes. Okay. And then um, once you go there in one in one week's time, time you your biometrics are taken, whereby your fingerprints and uh, a photo of your face is taken. Then um, you wait for ten working days. Within ten working days, you get an email uh, telling you that your travel document uh, is ready for collection. Or because you have left your passport at the TLS center. Yes. yes, when you go to the TLS center, you leave your passport there. Right. Okay. So, and yeah. now that your biometrics um, have been taken, do you get the card in Kenya, the biometric card in Kenya, or do you get it on, in the UK when you arrive on this side? Where does it get posted? Oh. So, uh, when you go collect your visa, uh, you'll get your passport and it will have a sticker on the passport and then it will come with a letter for the immigration an immigration letter okay. saying that you are successful and uh, you should uh, travel to uk within three months all right yes so once you travel to the uk uh, they tell you 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 see when you when you are doing the visa application at some point they asked you where will we send your brp the biometric card. Mm -hmm. So you give them an address, a post office near where you are staying or near your office. So what we did, we gave an address, our office address, okay. like the company address. So they gave, they sent the BRP a post office near the company. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow! Yeah. These are great tips, guys, you know, and even some of these things I myself don't know. The only process I know is how to make the application, which is what I come and tell you guys. I don't know the, then the process of what happens. And I think Ruth has been very good. And also the other previous interviewers like Mike, I have asked him, this is the same thing that they have said. This is the process. So and you guys are following all these tips. Even you can be here in the UK. Now, Ruth, I know you are already here in the UK and I want us to be talking about now life in the UK. How are yeah. you finding it? There, there are, of course, uh, advantages. I know uh, you'll be able now to, your family will be able to, um, to come to join you and your children, your dependents. There's a lot of advantages. And I want us to talk about that in the next part. So you guys don't miss out. Join us in part two. Well, me and Ruth talk about the advantages of coming to the UK, the benefits that she is having, and what she thinks about the life in the UK. Don't miss part two of this interview. For now, guys, I say Baraka.